When you think of Caterpillar, you think of yellow iron, bulldozers, excavators, mining trucks the size of houses. The company has been an industrial titan for nearly a century, building the machines that quite literally built the modern world. But here's the thing most people don't realize. There are entire categories of equipment that Caterpillar has never touched. And perhaps more surprisingly, there are machines they once built, successfully, that they walked away from entirely. Today, we're going to explore the gaps in Caterpillar's lineup. The machines you might expect to see wearing that famous yellow paint, but never will. From pickup trucks to agricultural tractors, from tower cranes to on-highway engines, we're going to dig into the business decisions, the market realities, and sometimes the outright failures that shaped what Caterpillar is and isn't today. Let's start with something that has taken the internet by storm, and it's completely fake. In 2024, images of a supposed Caterpillar pickup truck went viral across TikTok, YouTube and Facebook. These pictures showed a rugged yellow and black full-size truck with cat branding, complete with specs claiming a 6.7-litre turbo diesel V8 producing 500 horsepower and 1,000 pound-feet of torque. Some videos claimed the truck would feature a hybrid powertrain with 40 miles of electric range. There was just one problem. The entire thing was fabricated using artificial intelligence. The images originated from a Brazilian website called Garagem Master, which specializes in synthetic vehicle concepts. But why did so many people want to believe it was real? The answer lies in Caterpillar's history. The company spent over 40 years building legendary diesel engines that powered semi-trucks across America's highways. More than 1.5 million cat engines remain on the road today, many still running strong decades after they were built. The company earned seven JD Power Awards for customer satisfaction with their on-road engines. Fleet operators trusted the cat name implicitly. So when those fake images appeared, showing a cat-branded pickup that looked ready for the job site, people wanted it to exist. The brand had already earned their loyalty. A cat pickup truck just felt right, but Caterpillar has never shown any interest in consumer vehicles. Their business model depends on their dealer network, which is built around heavy equipment, not competing with Ford, GM and Ram at your local dealership. The service infrastructure, the sales model, the entire business approach, none of it translates to the pickup truck market. As one industry publication noted, Caterpillar's business is making the equipment that builds our world, not the pickups we drive on its roads. Now let's talk about something Caterpillar actually did build, and then gave up. In 1986, Caterpillar introduced the Challenger 65, a machine that would revolutionize agricultural equipment. It was marketed as the world's first rubber-tracked agricultural tractor, featuring the innovative Mobile Track system. This technology combined the flotation and traction advantages of traditional steel tracks with the versatility and speed of rubber tires. The Challenger 65 started as a 270 horsepower machine designed primarily for heavy tillage work. Farmers loved it. The tracks distributed weight more evenly than tires, reducing soil compaction. The traction was superior in wet conditions and the rubber tracks could travel on roads without tearing up pavement. By 1995, Caterpillar had expanded the line with row crop versions, the Challenger 35, 45 and 55, bringing tracked technology to a wider range of farming applications. The machines were produced at Caterpillar's DeKalb, Illinois facility, and they developed a devoted following among American farmers. So why did Caterpillar walk away from a successful product line? In 2002, the company sold the entire Challenger brand and all associated agricultural assets to Agco Corporation. The answer came years later from Glenn Barton, who served as Caterpillar's CEO from 1999 to 2004. Speaking after his retirement, Barton explained that the sale came down to a fundamental clash of priorities during an economic downturn. It was very clear to the upper management of the company that we had a clash of priorities at a time when the economy was soft, Barton said. We were underfunding our cash cows, so to speak, at the same time as we were investing heavily in agricultural development. The math was brutal. 
Continuing the Challenger program would have required well over $100 million in additional capital investment, much of it addressing distribution challenges. And that's where the real problem lay. Caterpillar's dealer network was built around construction equipment. These dealerships were located in industrial areas, staffed by people who understood earth moving and mining. They weren't equipped to serve farmers who needed parts during planting season and service during harvest. The agricultural market has entirely different rhythms, different customer expectations, and different service requirements. ACO, on the other hand, was built specifically around farm equipment. They owned brands like Massey Ferguson and Fent. They knew how to work with small dealers in rural communities. They understood the farm equipment distribution system in ways that Caterpillar simply didn't. They had small dealers here and there, Barton explained. They could sell one brand of tractor in one area and another brand in another area. They just knew how to work the farm distribution system better than we did. Today, Agco continues to produce Challenger tractors, though they began phasing out the brand name in 2020. The rubber track technology that Caterpillar pioneered lives on, but it no longer wears yellow paint. Here's something that might surprise you. Caterpillar, one of the world's largest construction equipment manufacturers, has never built cranes. Not tower cranes, not mobile cranes, not rough terrain cranes. Despite having excavators that can lift and move massive loads, despite building machines that dominate construction sites around the world, Caterpillar has stayed entirely out of the crane business. This isn't an oversight, it's a deliberate strategic choice. The crane industry developed along its own path, dominated by specialists like Lee Bear, Manitowoc, Grove, and Linkbelt. These companies built expertise in the specific engineering challenges of cranes, the boom geometry, the load charts, the outrigger systems, the counterweight configurations. It's a technical specialty that differs significantly from earth-moving equipment. Tower cranes, in particular, represent an entirely different business model, these machines are typically rented rather than purchased outright. They require specialized installation teams. They need to be inspected and certified repeatedly throughout their service life. The rental and service infrastructure for tower cranes is completely separate from the heavy equipment dealer network. Caterpillar's strength has always been in machines that move earth, mine resources, and build infrastructure. Their dealer network is optimized for selling and servicing excavators, loaders, and dozers. Moving into cranes would have required either building or acquiring an entirely separate business infrastructure. While you might occasionally see a cat engine powering a crane built by another manufacturer, and while Caterpillar does produce material handlers and telehandlers that serve some lifting applications, they've never attempted to compete in the dedicated crane market. It remains one of the most significant gaps in their otherwise comprehensive equipment lineup. When you see a concrete mixer truck rumbling down the highway with its drums slowly rotating, you might notice the Caterpillar name on some of them. But look closer. That cat badge is on the truck cab, not the mixer itself. During Caterpillar's brief foray into on-highway vocational trucks between 2011 and 2016, some of their CT660 and CT681 chassis were fitted with concrete mixer bodies. But Caterpillar didn't build those mixer drums. Companies like Putzmeister, Continental and McNeilus supplied the actual mixing equipment. Caterpillar has never manufactured concrete mixing equipment as part of their product line. The company offers small attachments, like the MB200 and MB250 mixer buckets that attach to skid steers, but these are simple material handling tools, not the specialized rotating drums that define the ready-mix concrete industry. The concrete mixer business, like the crane industry, developed as its own specialty. Companies like CIFA, Liebherr again and Stetter have dominated the market with their expertise in drum design, discharge systems, and the specialized metallurgy required to handle abrasive concrete mixtures. When Caterpillar exited the on-highway truck business in 2016, any connection they had to concrete mixer applications went with it. Today, the mixer drums you see on construction sites come from dedicated concrete equipment manufacturers, often mounted on truck chassis from companies like Mack, Peterbilt or International.
Perhaps no Caterpillar exit has been more dramatic than their departure from on-highway trucks, a departure that actually happened twice. The first exit came in 2008. For over 40 years, Caterpillar had been one of America's premier manufacturers of heavy-duty truck engines. The 3406 engine family, introduced in the 1980s, became legendary for its fuel efficiency and durability. Cat engines powered a significant portion of the semi-trucks crossing America's highways. But the 2007 EPA emission standards hit Caterpillar hard. The company had invested over $500 million developing their assert technology, advanced combustion emissions, reduction technology, as an alternative to the exhaust gas recirculation systems used by competitors. It was, according to Caterpillar executives at the time, the most expensive development program the company had ever undertaken. The assert engines met the 2007 standards, but reports of reliability problems and maintenance issues plagued the new power plants. Meanwhile, even stricter 2010 regulations were looming on the horizon. Meeting those standards would require additional massive investment, likely including the selective catalytic reduction technology that Caterpillar had tried to avoid. In June 2008, Caterpillar announced they were exiting the on-highway engine business. They would not produce EPA 2010 compliant truck engines. After four decades of powering America's trucking industry, the yellow engines would disappear from new semi-trucks. But here's where the story gets interesting, and ultimately tragic. On the very same day Caterpillar announced their engine exit, they revealed a partnership with Navistar to build vocational trucks. If they couldn't compete as an engine supplier, they would compete as a truck manufacturer. The CT660 launched in 2011. It was a Class 8 vocational truck designed specifically for construction applications, dump trucks, mixers, haulers. The truck was designed by Caterpillar but built by Navistar at their Mexican facility, powered by Navistar's MaxForce engines with CAT branding. Caterpillar had high hopes. They aimed to crack the top two in vocational truck sales within five years, leveraging their construction equipment dealer network to sell to customers who were already buying CAT excavators and loaders. It didn't work out that way. The Wall Street Journal reported in 2015 that CAT was selling only about 1,000 vocational trucks annually, a tiny fraction of the market. The company had relationships with buyers representing 70% of vocational truck sales in North America, but those relationships weren't translating into truck purchases. In July 2015, Caterpillar announced they would end their partnership with Navistar and take over both design and manufacturing of their trucks at a facility in Victoria, Texas. They seemed committed to making the truck business work. Then, less than a year later, in February 2016, everything changed. Remaining a viable competitor in this market would require significant additional investment to develop and launch a complete portfolio of trucks, said Ramin Younesi, Vice President of Caterpillar's Industrial Power Systems Division. And upon an updated review, we determined there was not a sufficient market opportunity to justify the investment. The Victoria facility never built a single cat truck. The 660, 680 and 681 were discontinued. After five years of trying, Caterpillar had exited the on-highway truck business entirely for the second time. The vocational truck market simply didn't fit Caterpillar's model. Unlike construction equipment, where CAT dominates and can command premium prices, the truck market featured entrenched competitors with established dealer networks. Mack, Peterbilt, Kenworth and Western Star had decades of relationships with the same construction customers Caterpillar was trying to reach. Our final story is perhaps the most recent, and in many ways, the most telling about how Caterpillar thinks about its business. For years, Caterpillar built purpose-built forestry equipment, wheel skidders, track feller bunches, wheel feller bunches, and knuckle boom loaders. These weren't adapted construction machines. They were equipment designed specifically for logging operations. The machines were built at a facility in LaGrange, Georgia, with additional operations in Auburn, Alabama, and Smithfield, North Carolina. Caterpillar employed approximately 270 people directly supporting the purpose-built forestry business. 
Then, in 2018, Caterpillar announced they were selling the entire purpose-built forestry division to Weiler Inca, an Iowa-based company that had been building asphalt paving equipment for Caterpillar dealers since 2005. The sale closed in 2019. Weiler Forestry took over the LaGrange Manufacturing Facility, the Auburn Demonstration and Training Center, and the Smithfield Parts Distribution Center. They acquired all the product designs, the manufacturing capabilities, and most of the workforce. What's fascinating about this exit is that Caterpillar cited high customer demand as one of the reasons for selling. That seems contradictory. Why sell a business that customers want? The answer comes down to specialization. Caterpillar explained that while they had successfully modified core products like hydraulic excavators for forestry applications, the purpose-built forestry equipment required a different approach. These machines needed dedicated development, specialized manufacturing and focused attention that Caterpillar felt it couldn't provide while also managing its massive core business. We've determined that while Caterpillar has successfully modified core products like hydraulic excavators to meet the requirements of our forestry customers, we need to take a different approach with our purpose-built forestry products to ensure that our customers' demand for specialized forestry products can be quickly met, the company stated. Weiler, as a smaller, more nimble manufacturer, could respond to forestry customer needs faster than Caterpillar's massive corporate structure allowed. They could iterate on designs, implement customer feedback, and develop new products without navigating the bureaucracy of a $50 billion corporation. Today, Weiler Forestry Equipment is still sold through the Cat Dealer Network. Caterpillar remains committed to forestry through their modified excavators, dozers, and wheel loaders. But the purpose-built equipment, the specialized machines designed from the ground up for logging, now wears the Weiler name. So what does all of this tell us about Caterpillar? The company that built an empire on yellow iron has clear boundaries around what it will and won't do. They don't chase every opportunity in the heavy equipment market. They don't try to be everything to everyone. Pickup trucks, not their customer. The consumer vehicle market requires entirely different infrastructure and expertise. Agricultural tractors. They tried it, built an innovative product, and walked away when the distribution challenges proved too difficult. Cranes and concrete mixers. These are specialized industries that developed their own expertise and infrastructure. Caterpillar sees no advantage in competing there. On highway trucks and engines. They tried twice, first with engines, then with complete trucks, and the economics never worked out. The investment required couldn't justify the market opportunity. Purpose-built forestry equipment, a business they handed off to a specialist who could serve those customers better. In many ways, these exits and abstentions reveal Caterpillar's discipline. They focus on what they do best, earth moving, mining, and the industrial engines that power everything from generators to marine vessels to locomotives. They maintain the world's most extensive dealer network for heavy equipment. They invest in technologies that serve their core markets. Every machine they don't build is a decision about where to concentrate their resources. And for a company approaching its centennial, those decisions have clearly served them well. The next time you see that famous yellow paint on a construction site, take a moment to appreciate not just what Caterpillar builds, but what they've chosen not to.